Hey there. How's it going? My name's Andre LaRoe. I'm a Brooklyn-based visual artist, and today I'm going to speak to you about reflecting your true self, editing people photos. I guess my name's Andre. Um, in the past, I've worked with clients like Apple, Adobe, ever heard of them, um, and Lululemon, a bunch of other things that I'm really excited about. But I got my start as a journalist, and before that, I love to take photos of my friends for yearbooks I made. So taking photos of people is really important to me. It's an art form. You're trying to capture the essence of someone in a single image. So if taking photos of someone um, is an art, then I would like to say that editing them is a science. And that is what our class is all about. How do we take an image of someone we love, um, someone we care about, or someone we just met, and really put it over the top. Well, let's start with this. Communication. Don't panic. If, whether this is your first or your 80th time in Lightroom, it's really easy to get really stressed out about edits and if you got it perfect. And we're going to get into communication with your subject in a second, but let's start with, are you communicating with yourself about your intentions, what your goals are with your image? What do I mean by that? Um, <laughs> there's a big, really great internet term called understanding the assignment. What does that mean? Well, what's the photo you're taking for? Is it for an Instagram post? Is it, um, for your best friend's birthday? You want to share it online? Um, is it going to go in a photo album or on a wall that alters some of the things you want to do? So for example, these are some photos of my friends, um, and a gentleman on the left, he sends, um, photos to his mom every day, which I think is such a sweet thing. And so whenever I see him and his wife, I take portraits of them because he'll send photos just to let her know what's going on in the mail. And so the value proposition for him is a pretty straightforward photo that just shows what he's up to. So for me, that means that my edit is going to be pretty basic, pretty calm versus if this was a headshot, obviously his wife wouldn't be there. Um, he would have different clothes and the edit might be a little sharper, a little bit more serious. Or for example, if you look at these edits, if I was in high school and trying to achieve like a film look, let's say I forgot to, uh, develop film in time and was trying to trick my teacher or on the right, if I was trying to get, get something a little bit more muted, but knowing that it's for print, the center image edit is the one that makes the most sense because it's the most dynamic. Um, when it's printed out, it won't look as intense as the one on the left, hyper-futuristic, or as flat as the one on the right. Understanding the assignment is the first step in making a great edit because it starts with, what am I doing this for? And if you can answer that question, no matter what, that will be your North Stars, that will be your North Stars and editor going forward. So you're probably thinking, that's all well and good, but I've never used Lightroom before. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Well, I recommend trying the learn and discover tools in Lightroom. Have you ever used them? Let's take a quick moment, check it out. So if we go over to Lightroom, I'm in Lightroom now. Um, in this top left corner, I'm gonna tap to reveal this um, bar. On the left, underneath add photos, you'll see two things, learn and discover. Let's start with learn. So the way Learn works is it's almost like an active chapter book um, for you to kind of sit with the edits and the words of a photographer. You can find photographers you love. Like I love um, both Malik Sidibe and my friend Emily Blinko. And essentially what Emily does, I accidentally clicked on her profile, forgive me, um, in her Create an Impactful out Outdoor Portrait, is she tells you in this little description what she's doing and lets you know which core features she focuses on, color, light, and effects, all three with which we're gonna get into in a little bit. The way that, that uh, the Learn tutorials work is, as you click into them, you get to work alongside the photographer. So here you'll see she goes through each chapter to say, when I crop, I do this. And as you tap through each thing, it's interactive, so you can start to understand how the tools in Lightroom work. So if you have your North Star of why you're making this edit, but you don't know how just yet, I would definitely advise starting 
with learn and discover files. And I'm going to show you how discover files are different, but right now we're on learn. So you see in this top, um, top bar, if I keep tapping, it'll show each step along the way, as well as some wording from the photographer, in this case, Emily Blinko, she's great, you should follow her, as to not only why she cropped, but now, hey, I use some lighting adjustments to add impact and bring the viewer's eye straight to the dog. So as you're going, she says, you know, I'm trying to brighten, brighten the photo to bring the eye in. Then she talks about lightening the dark tones. Um, we're gonna get into all of that in a second. But um, basically, as you go through each of these, I don't, we don't, shouldn't go through each, uh, we shouldn't go through this step by step because this is a short class. But as you click through each thing, it tells you exactly what she did and why. And it's kind of a sweet thing because you can see this amazing before and after. You see how the photo is slowly changing before your eyes with an explanation as to why. So if you are a person who enjoys learning at your own pace, I think the Learn tool is very, very helpful and a positive way for you to sit and just interact with Lightroom without having all the pressure when you start and open and you see all these options. It's a powerful app, but you have to know how to use it. So let's finish up with Emily. Let's click out of this. Um, and you see this huge difference in the image. Let's give her a smiley face because we loved it. And if you look, you'll see this before and after. It's a little bit cooler, it's much brighter. Um, even the red has a little pop to it. And these are all little subtle things that you do when you edit. Now, if we go over to Discover, you'll see that there are edits that you get from the community. So let's go to this featured community edit, actually. So the difference between um, Learn and Discover is pretty simple. Here, you still see the edits folks are doing. You can even, since I'm on the computer, you can see I can click through and jump to different spots and see what they did and see how these changes impact the image. And kind of a fun little tool at the end is you can hit save this preset and this edit that you love that someone did, you can save it, it'll keep their name in there so you know who it is and it'll save into your save presets folder so you can always use this preset again. But like I said, it's, I find it really helpful because you can scroll to the top and you can go through every single step the person did um, and just take a quick look and ask yourself, you know, what can I take from this editor to this image? Oh, this person used highlights to bring down how bright the clouds were. Oh, this person warm, like, at increased warmth and temperature. What a kind of cool way to edit a sunset, right? Um, Discover files, I find to be really helpful when I'm, I live in New York, so I ride on the train or um, kind of sitting around. It's a good way for me to ingest different styles of editing um, casually. I can take five or 10 minutes and look at one or two of them. Um, and some of them have saved this preset as an option. Um, and so it's a, I find it to be a really positive way to learn how Lightroom works. So that is in case you're feeling overwhelmed, but you won't be because now in this class, we're going to go over how to take and how to edit people portraits the best way we can. So hitting back to play, let's get into the meat of it. Light, 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 light. Do you know that photography means painting with light? I always thought that to be really awesome because, you know, photography is sometimes considered a low art. You know, people think painting and um, drawing are always really up here. But I think photography is this really beautiful thing because you have an opportunity to freeze a single moment in time. You know, something we see every day and make it beautiful. But to do that, you need good light. So like I said, it's painting with light. Um, and to be a, a great photographer, even a good one, you need to be both judicious and masterful with your light. So what I mean by that, you need good light, and you need strong light. <laughs> the difference is between strong or weak light is, for example, I'm filming this in this um, hotel room I have right now, and I have a bunch of lights on. These are all very soft lamps, but generally, if I was taking a portrait, I wouldn't want to take a photo um, in here because the light would not only be low, but all these lamps have a different color temperature. And <clears throat> when I said soft light, I want my light, although this is soft, to be to be strong enough that I can see it, but soft enough that it doesn't overpower my face, if that makes sense. Like just to show you an example, if I were to just turn on this flashlight, put it right on my face, this light's strong, but you're seeing it's casting this very aggressive shadow. That's not, not, not naturally something we want. So just a couple quick things. Um, there's natural light, which is everything you get from the sun, directly or indirectly, and then artificial light, which is, you know, what I'm dealing with in this room now. Natural light, 
um, you can get from a window, really anything outdoors that involves the sun, um, even overcast has natural light, artificial light, are bulbs like these, um, and strobe lights, which professional photographers use to freeze motion or take photos in a studio. But that's not all we're looking for with light. What we really want to know is how do we edit light? I brought up the natural versus artificial to start so you can get a better understanding um, as to what light you want to use. It's important that you understand this, you know, so let's say tomorrow you take this class and you're like, I'm going to go take a picture of this person I love, my partner, I see them all the time. And you stick him next to the window and you're like, oh, this is too harsh. Let's move him further away. And you're like, oh, it's a little too dark. Let me turn on a lamp. And all of a sudden you have an image that is <laughs> yellow on one side and white on the other. And you don't know why. And that's because you're mixing light sources. And so we're going to get into right now um, how to use the, the light panel how to use it to edit your photos, and then we'll get into color to help you understand how to avoid situations like that. I jumped the gun a little bit wide. Let's go into the next slide. So we're gonna go down to this folder I have, excuse me, we're gonna go down to this album I have called Portrait Class, because that's what this is. Um, a couple quick things about Lightroom. You add your photos here and import. Um, you can have all your photos organized together. Lightroom uh, runs on Adobe Sensei, so they can organize by date. Um, you can also type in different things like water, blue, and it'll intelligently search for those things for you. Um, and Lightroom is really amazing because I always say it's like it, one camera raw and Bridge had a baby. And that it, it has this amazing organizational structure like Bridge, but it has the ability to do everything non-destructively um, like camera raw. And I think that's so, such a powerful thing. Um, and now that uh, Lightroom is in web bit, um, is cloud <clears throat> now that Lightroom is cloud based, which it has been um, for a couple of years now, you have the ability to have this amazing organizational tool that has your images on your computer, on your phone, on your tablet. Um, and as a professional photographer, I can use it to get what I need quickly. So I'm going to show you two images. This is a photo of Lydia um, at the Line Hotel in Los Angeles. Now, if you've ever been to the Line, you know that all of the rooms have these giant glass windows. And so you can see, like I was talking about, you. this is strong light, but it's soft. You're not seeing any aggressive shadows on her skin. All the way through, you're seeing this like really soft light run through. Here's a photo of my friend Addis that I took on the New York City subway. You see it's a little different in that there are subtle shadows that are underneath his hat and even cast by his sun, by his glasses. That's because all of our light's just coming from these edges, right? Or even here's another photo I took um, for the Business Improvement District in Clinton Hill where I used to live. And you can see that you're getting most of your light from above, so that light's blown out, and we're getting some uneven light on these women's faces with some little hot zones here. And so first and foremost, great portrait. Try your best to get a photo like this, soft, even light, not overpowering your subject. It can really do, it can really mean the world to it. Other ways to get this, this is indoors with window. This is my friend, um, Jose, outdoors. Um, this is next to the New York Public Library. He's just underneath an archway so that all that harsh light that the sun can give is just slightly separate from his body. So that light that comes in that's underneath this awning is nice and even and soft. A lot of times I take portraits in shadows. Um, and then lastly, this is a portrait I took of my friend Bree on an overcast day. And you can see that if you look across your skin, there's a little bit of a bright zone. But for the most part, this is nice, even light. So let's get into the editing a little. Now, if we click in, the first thing we see, the first drop down panel is light. So just to explain what these are. Lightroom is non-destructive, meaning if I decide I want to darken this photo a ton and then I close the app, reopen it, I can just double tap and the slider will go back to zero. I can also add numerical values. Um, with that in mind, let me explain what these sliders are in light. So exposure increases or decreases the brightness of all of the pixels. I think it's kind of a dumb tool in that it does, it's kind of like a hammer when sometimes you need a hammer and other times you might need something slightly more precise. So let's say with this photo, we want to just bring it down a little bit. It was a little too bright. Next we have contrast. Contrast is one of the ones that we all know. Um, it increases the contrast in our pixels. So it's going to make our brights brighter and our darks darker. So we bring contrast up. You can see 
you know, look how bright this gets. You can even you can barely see what's going on on this um, on these bed sheets anymore. And in Lydia's hair, you're losing that detail. So I actually am going to leave contrast alone. Now, remember, I don't know, 15 seconds ago when I said I thought exposure was kind of a dumb tool. What I mean by that is sometimes when you're trying to make certain things brighter, instead of just getting all of the pixels, you can instead use highlights and shadows to target the pixels that you really are trying to um, change. So if we think this photo is too bright, I think it's bright right here on the bed sheets. And those would be highlights, the brightest parts of the image. So all I have to do is just decrease my highlights. So let's go negative. And you see, look how much detail just came back in these sheets. So look at it at negative 100 versus positive 100. And you never want your image to have no detail in an area. Like you see over in her black shirt, you can see the seam. Now, if I brought my shadows all the way down, there's no seam. There's nothing there to see. You always want to make sure there's enough detail in your portraits. Um, because of that light's nice and even, you can see details in people's faces, their skin. Think about all the things that you do every day to look your very best. You want folks to understand that and see that in, in the portraits of you and so do your subjects. So choosing good light is smart, but now that we're editing, let's make sure that we don't we don't overdo it to make sure that um, we maintain our responsibility as portrait photographers of making folks look accurate to themselves. So what I would do for this edit is I would bring my highlights down a little bit. I'd bring my contrast down just a touch, bring my shadows up because I want to see some more of Lydia's shirt. Um, and then we kind of have a nice base. Now, if you're like, I don't know how my edit went, you can always tap this little toggle right in this bottom right corner where you can see your original versus your new. And you're like, you must be like, wow, that's a lot flatter than I thought it would be. Well, yeah, but I'm gonna do some other things to it in a minute. So that's essentially what the light panel does. It allows you to alter the light um, either in big expanses of exposure or smaller measures using highlight. Looking over at Addis now, um, Addis is dealing with a light source that isn't even and is kind of weak. And the best way for me to tell you is if I go over to the info, which is in the bottom right corner, um, you can see that I photographed this at 3200 ISO, which just means I had to make my camera very sensitive to light, which is what made it a little bit grainier. And that's how I ended up getting the photo at this detail level. So for Addis, I actually first would bring my highlights all the way down because you notice this is the brightest part of the image where the light's coming from. And since there's not a lot of other light, of course it's gonna be overexposed my shadows up. I want to see what's going on in this jacket. And then I'm actually going to increase a little bit of contrast and bring my exposure up just a little bit. So here's our before, here's our after. And dramatically, you can see that your eye stops going to the brightest part of the image, which is um, where the lights are and can settle in on his eyes, which has this very lovely detail of the rest of those lights reflecting in them. So that's how um, the light panel works on a basic level. Now, Let's get over back to our presentation and get to color. Color is so fun. It's what everybody wants to focus on, everyone wants to do. And light is a good setup for you to understand how um, Lightroom works and make sure you have the right amount of light. But color is what establishes and maintains mood. So let's get that, let's get to it. We talked about setting your intention in uh, module one. So now that we have our attention set about, you know, what our value proposition is, what the goal of our images are, we have to ask the question, what story do we want our color to tell? In this bottom left photo, we have these two gentlemen who are about to get married and they're wearing these um, dark suits against um, the symmetrical background, which makes, you, makes them feel very relaxed, proper and together. Versus this other photo I took for American Express, at a Miami hotel, it's very bright, very vibrant. And this last photo um, has very muted earth tones, right? What story do you want your color to tell? Earlier, I kind of hinted at the fact that in here I'm using some um, artificial lights. And sometimes if you mix artificial light and um, natural light, you'll see that images end up having, the image will have parts that are different colors. If you look at this image that I have up on the screen, in the back of the image, you're seeing these little blue and yellow lights. But those lights, when you see them and you're underneath them, actually look white because our eyes adjust to it. 
but our camera can only adjust to a single thing um, as the true white. And so how do you deal with that? What happens if you take an image that um, when you look at it, it looks yellow, it looks orange. You can tell by looking at the person's skin or their shirt. Let's go and check it out in Lightroom. So let's get over and let's get over to um, this image of Carson and Giuseppe. So I took this image outside. Um, in the early morning, we did a sunrise shoot. Sometimes it can be kind of a lot, but we get we do what we can. And um, I set my white balance and everything was good. Looks great. But, you know, let's say the night before I was photographing a concert and the lights in there were very, very blue, right? So if they were very blue, I would have to have had my color temperature to get, get them right on my camera or my white balance or my Kelvin to be pretty warm. Now, if you look at this on face value, you might be like, oh, maybe it's sunrise. But the way that you can tell this image isn't right is you look at the white point. Look at her shirt. It doesn't look white. And if you're still not sure, let's use a little trick from before, bring our highlights down, and look at her shirt. It looks off-white, but I know that it was white. So how do I fix that? Now that we're over in color, which is right below light, we can tap this eyedropper tool. Oop. And if we tap right on the white, you'll see that the color temperature changed. You see that? I'll do it again for you. Bring it right over. You see how it changed? And now the true white is white and everyone's skin tone looks right. There are times when if you mix light, um, you'll have to decide what your true white is. Um, and then the other thing will look orange or blue or green. Um, there's a way to clean that up, but I would advise you generally as you're taking photos of people to try to avoid mixing your light sources. So now that we have this photo open, let's get into a couple other things to set the mood, set the establish and maintain the mood, set the mood sounded weird. So in this image, this is supposed to be for this bandana company, Bandits. Um, and it's supposed to be the idea of bandits in the city, right? So it's early. This looks very bright. It feels more like an ad for like a more established like brand that we see all the time. And they want something a little bit edgier. So why don't we go up? We'll add some contrast. And then if we look through our sliders, you saw temperature already. Tint also impacts your overall white balance. So when you tap this um, white balance selector, the eyedropper tool, it will move the temperature and the tint sliders for you. The real, the things I really want you to focus on are vibrance and saturation. Saturation is similar to exposure in that like it changes the saturation of every pixel. It can be a hammer, um, but what you really want is vibrance. Vibrance is a really rad tool um, that increases saturation of parts of the image that weren't all that saturated. So if you look, look at the difference when I go all the way up in saturation, yeesh, or all the way down. Unsaturated is black and white. But if I go all the way up in vibrance, it's not as aggressive. It's still a lot, but it helps you make a more subtle edit that increases. Look how these orange get a little more orange, these blues get more blue, but the overall image isn't overpowered. Now, speaking of that orange, if we look at this jacket for Carson, I might think, I don't know, his jacket's a little bright. Maybe I want to tone it down. It's overpowering Giselle. We have this really cool tool in Lightroom called Color Mix. Color Mix is amazing because it lets you select different colors, red, orange, yellow, and then be hyper specific. We're talking about precision before. This is like scalpel level with what you want to do. I can change the hue of the oranges. Look at how Carson's jacket gets more red or more green. But I generally don't play with the hue as much. What I do with little cell edits, like I can bring down the saturation of the orange just a little and bring up the luminance. So you see how the jacket just gets a little bit less aggressive and it looks more muted like Giselle's um, overcoat. These are all ways that I kind of get my image where I want it by minimizing distracting things. And then to cap it off, I use this really cool tool called color grading. So. For my folks that like split toning before, this is like this, but I would say a little bit easier. There are four overall circles or shadows, midtones, highlights, and global. Global lets you just change the tint of anything, but we're not going to do that here. Um, we're going to remember that our shadows are the darkest parts of the image, highlights are the brightest part, and midtones are everything else. So let's give this a little bit of mood. For To work with um, 
the color grading tool, you just tap anywhere to select a color. So I actually like this red undertone for the shadow because I can get a little red in Carson's hair, a little red here, um, and it works well with the warmth of what they have on. Um, and in addition, the original image, if you remember, was a little blue. So adding that is nice. We're gonna skip our midtones for now, and then for our highlights, I'm actually gonna go slightly opposite. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a cyan. Um, and then lastly, for our midtones, I'm gonna get a little bit warmer. So now I have this image that like feels kind of weird um, and feels a little bit more youthful and young and playful um, because I have this like really interesting warm mix going on. Um, and there's some other things you can do with color grading, but on this basis, you select a point, you select it, <clears throat> you select either your shadows, midtones, or highlights that's your pixel brightness, then you decide what color cast each one has. And then after that, I simply click in, select a color, and go. The, the playfulness, the kind of the cool part about it is, if you decide, I like this color, but I want it more saturated, after you've selected it, if you just press and slide, it will increase the saturation of just that color um, on a linear, like on a linear line. And the best way to think about it is, if you, are if you want it, want it to be less saturated, you want it to be closer to the center, you want it more saturated, you want it to be um, closer to the edges. And as re and remember, Lightroom is non-destructive, so at any point, you can just hit Control z or go back um, and start from where you were before. So that's color. Now, let's get over to effects. Effects are always tricky because uh, folks want to do a lot <laughs> with their images all the time. I'm going to work through an edit of my friend Jasmine so you can know um, exactly what I'm working with and why. And then um, I'll show you how effects work. So this will put on my friend Jasmine. We're going to bring up our exposure with just a touch. We want to overpower the back. We want to bring up our contrast. Bring down our highlights because I want that background back. I want to get that part of her hair going. Um, and her hair is super bright actually so I can bring my shadows down. Um, and so this is kind of like a fun moody photo I took right before I took this photo of Carson and Giselle. Now um, I'm going to leave my color temperature alone. I'm going to increase my vibrance. My midtones for this photo of Jasmine, I'm going to make a little red. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I had something and I lost it. There we go. A little yellow. I'm going to go over to my shadows. Make them a little red, too much, too much. Um, and then we're gonna go, just a little soft tint that feels like irreverent. Now, let's look at our effects. Texture, clarity, and dehaze. All of these are very powerful tools. The big difference I would say is, when you're looking at effects in detail, before going wild with sharpening, like going all the way up here, and you'll see how it can like really distort someone's face. I would instead use a texture tool because it'll add a little bit of sharpening by giving texture to your pixels. I generally use clarity more for landscapes. And then dehaze, I actually think is very lovely when you photograph outdoors. Um, it acts and reacts similarly to the contrast tool. It adds a little punch to your image and takes some of the haze out. So once again, one kind of cool thing about each section is you can tap this little eye to see the changes. So you see that by adding just a little bit of texture, you can see the change in Jasmine's hair as well as her face without overpowering it like you did, like I did with sharpening. Something to consider. Uh, with these, it's all a me measure of taste, but generally I would tell you, I would keep each value underneath 20 and texture is the one I'd want when I'm particularly focusing on faces for folks that I care about. Um, in this image, for example, on the left, I use texture um, just to make sure that the depth and the detail on a man's hair really kind of popped and you saw it. So I said a lot of things um, and hopefully kind of wet your palette for editing, but I would be remiss not to bring up one of my favorite things that Lightroom has, which is its amazing library of presets, particularly its premium presets that are focused on skin tones, particularly the dark and medium skin tones. It's a really, really amazing tool. 
um, that's been added for paying customers, as well as free presets that I worked on that are for black and brown skin. So if we slide over here, let's take that photo of Jasmine, we love it. Let's go over to this image that I took on the studio a couple years ago. These are two darker skinned folks, Jordan and Miriam. And um, sometimes it can be a little stressful because you don't want to just um, just hop in here and you're like, I don't have time. Like, ah, oh, what if I do this? I'm like, it looks weird. Okay, it actually looks great. Shout out to <laughs> adding that shadow. But if I go to the very top, I know I said lighting with light was start was early, but really what I meant was <clears throat> I know I said that light was the first thing, but if you check presets, actually, are. so you tap presets, disregard my hella disorganized presets, and at the very top you'll see presets, portraits, deep skin. Portraits, medium skin, portraits, light skin. Medium skin, darker skin tones, like on the darker end, deep skin like myself, medium skin tones that are um, closer to like brown and light skin tones being closer to white. Um, if you go to the deep skin tones here, you'll see that there are these awesome variations of very like tasteful, um, tasteful presets that un account for the undertones that folks have. Undertones, um, we can be a little, our skin can be a little yellow, a little orange, a little red. And previously, um, the way that we were applying presets was unfortunate. <laughs> um, and so this is a really cool tool because it makes presets that give variations per skin tone. So if you look at how their skin works, it looks differently. Orange is not the one we want for these folks. Red or yellow looks better. Um, and the best way to know is after I finish editing, I would share, I would share the original image with the subject and ask them if their skin looks like how they believed it would. It's a little bit more desaturated, but you can still see the yellow isn't perfect for them. And so if you look through each one of these, everyone, even down to PDO5, which is a lot more dramatic of an edit, um, you're seeing something that is reflective of people's skin tones. So if you're a premium subscriber, please make sure that you're using these. They're, used, they're made by some really awesome artists um, and that I worked with before I love very much. And if you actually go down to portraits, these are the free ones that we made also that um, work with skin tones. So make sure that if you have access to the premium ones, you use them. And if you don't, um, try out the free ones. And if you like them, try out the premium ones. I'm very proud of the work that we did for that. So kind of rounding it out, um, presets are a way for you to make an edit um, or actually have a good starting place. Presets help set color, um, tone, and mood. But what's cool about presets that I did forget to show you is, let's say we pick light skin. Let's say we pick uh, deep skin on one warm. You see how these sliders moved? If you move along, you see how these sliders are moved. And even in color mix, all these little things are moved along. They give you the option to then make edits based on the edit. So you took the stuff from the Discover files. You took, took the stuff from the... Um, tutorials. You watch this class and you try a couple presets. You're like, okay, this gets me in a good starting place, or I love this. Let me export. But if I don't love this, what can I do to make this better now? Um, if you set a preset, you can always change it. You can add texture if you want some more punch on their face. Um, let's say we go back to that one we liked where we add a little red to our shadows, right? And we have this image that we like, but we're like, oh, it's still a little flat. Why don't we bring down our exposure a little bit? And now we have something that's like rich in color, right? And that comes from an understanding and from a practice. Like I said, editing is a science and portraits are an art. You took the great first step of taking this class and having the positive attitude of listening to your subjects and knowing what, this, um, what the assignment is. So now that you've kind of gotten a crash course on what the tools do, it's really up to you to practice um, so that you can get exactly what you want out of the images. I want to say thank you um, for coming to my class. And once again, if you um, have the time, please check out the Learn and Discover tools. They are, they are completely free and available on the Lightroom app, web, mobile, you know, the phone, everything that you could use uh, to become a better photographer and editor. I wish you nothing but the best. And I want to say thank you again for coming to my class. Have a good day.